Garden Report is brought to you by Price Picks and the Game Time app. Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report. After the Celtics capped their third straight win on this road trip uh, with a game that was done just minutes into the fourth quarter, uh, thanks to a big push from a second unit, all three guard lineup in the second quarter, and Jason Tatum rolling over the Hawks defense and pushing the Celtics to a lead uh, that reached as many as 30 plus uh, in this win over Atlanta, their lone trip down here this year, and will always be remembered as Nemeish Kata's first NBA start. A bit of a surprise, Jalen Brown missed this one again with the hip flexor strain. Joe Mazzulla wouldn't say pregame whether he got the MRI or not yet, uh, but said again he's day-to-day -day going back to Boston on Wednesday. Warriors coming up, a huge game there, so we'll see what his status is tomorrow heading into that one uh, with the Celtics home there. But Kata takes his place this time. It was Cornette the first time. They go to Kata in this game. Uh, he said he didn't know whether he would be starting in this one or not, uh, but got a feeling when he went through walkthroughs today in that role uh, that he'd be joining Holiday, White, Tatum, as well as Al Horford, uh, who had high praises from this morning at Shoot Around. I got to talk to Kata as well there, an interview that's going to be out tomorrow uh, about acclimating to this team. It's been a tough process. Charles Lee told me in Charlotte uh, that there was even some pushback from Kata to some of the defensive things that they were trying to get him to embrace. And it's been a variety of roles. Joe Mazzulla said before the game, it's understanding that there's going to be some gray area out there. There's not a lot of concrete defensively for this team. They adapt, they adjust. If they see something, you're supposed to react and communicate amongst each other. And obviously the center is at the heart of a lot of that. Horford saying that he'll pull him aside, he'll say some things to him. And that had to happen pretty early in this game, five minutes in after a few missed uh, coverages defensively and a fast break where maybe he didn't get to the ball fast enough. Uh, he comes off the court. Tillman was already at the scorer's table, but he comes right off the court. And Joe, who doesn't usually do this, came right down the sideline and unloaded on him a little bit. Uh, Tatum got a little assurance from his teammates there, or Kata rather, from Tatum and others uh, along the sideline. And in that first time out, chance to refresh, chance to bounce back from some of the things that went wrong early in this game for Kata. And here's Missoula talking about what he wanted to convey to Kata in that moment. Uh, he's just grown a lot as a player and uh, quite honestly, he doesn't know how good he can be. Uh, he's got a great ceiling. And so the standard's very high. And um, I thought he great some, uh, did some great things for us tonight. Uh, but when you're as good as he could be, uh, you know, he's just got to, we all got to hold him to that standard every single night. And so it's a credit to him for uh, just allowing us to coach him. It's a credit to the guys for supporting him. But you see when he's capable of when he's at his best. And um, he could be a real asset for us towards the season. So he worked really hard. He cares. He wants to be coached. And uh, it was a tremendous, uh, I'm grateful that he allows me to coach him. But um, he's starting to realize how good he really can be. And he's working at it. So that's big. If you're a Kata fan, and I am, as much as I am a Luke fan, I'm a Kata fan too, back to the day they signed him on the two-way deal. There's upside there. There's a ton of promise. You can rattle it off. Some of the vision he shows in the high post. The offensive rebounding, which two games ago he ranked 13th in the league uh, in total offensive rebounding. I think he's gotten into the top 10 offensive rebounds per 36 minutes. 10 points, 7 rebounds in his first start here tonight. Uh, that ended up going much better. In the second half at one point, it felt like he was dunking the ball every time, finishing every time down the floor for a stretch where the Celtics really started to pull away there. Uh, so that's a skill, the offensive rebounding. Defensively, you see some promise as a roamer. You see some promise even with him switching onto the perimeter. He stays in front of guys you wouldn't think he'd be able to stay in front of, and that showed again here in this one. And then the size, the athleticism. Uh, you want to see him be a better finisher. The defense is a big reason that he's struggled to break through fully to this point, but that's coming around, and now I think it's getting to be a 70% shooter. Screening, we saw him lay down a crushing screen on uh, Daniels early in this game. But I had him look back this morning on the early stage of his NBA or his Celtics career when he got here and he was trying to adapt to everything that they were throwing at him. Here's what he had to say about that time. What about when you first got here? How did you get used to the things that this team does? It was a lot going on, you know, like um, I feel like my mind was racing for like a thousand miles per hour at that time, you know. Um, 
but he did a great job with me. Like the whole time last year, he was really trying to, he was really trying to help me out, teach me more than anything. And, um, it's paying off right now. So I think people forget he got waived by the Kings from JaVale McGee. Kings want to sign JaVale McGee. They let him go. Uh, after a couple years of investing in him, developing him in Stockton, he was one of the best G League players in the league for the Kings. And the Celtics picked him up on a two-way, which was surprising to me. I didn't think he was a two-way guy at that point. He wasn't. He ended up playing 50 games, which is about all you're allowed as a two-way player to start that season. They ended up signing him just before the last day of the year uh, to a long-term deal, and then they got a new one done after uh, declining his option this offseason. So last year he comes in late in the offseason already, aggravates the foot injury that he was dealing with that July, and missed the start of that year. If you remember, a lot of people were excited about his preseason coming into that year, uh, and ultimately had to miss a handful of games to start that year, but plays on the West Coast trip. Cornette missed some time. Porzingis was out around them then as well. And Missoula still points back to that as a moment that really helped that team a year ago. Every time they called on him, and he was the fifth center at that point, I think, uh, you got good production from him in those spots. Uh, so a huge boost for the Celtics here tonight and at the start of the season. And now you're starting to dream just what can he become. Uh, he talked about that a little bit in the locker room after this game. Uh, does he realize how good he could be? Yeah, 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 I feel like it's a lot, a lot still that I can learn or be better at eventually. You know, um, I'm learning, learning new, new, new systems, new, new ways to guard, and just being, being impactful in different ways. Um, so the more I can, the more I can develop into into those skills and own into them, I feel like I can. I can, I can be really, really impactful. So, is another spot start in store against the Warriors? Obviously, a team that you do have to get on the perimeter a ton on. There's going to be some Curry matchups out there. That's going to be difficult to navigate if the Celtics are missing Brown again. So, we'll get an update on him uh, tomorrow and uh, go from there. It'll be Horford back at center, I'd imagine, in that game if Brown can go. And if not, they're going to have to decide. Do you want to go three guards a little bit? We saw that tonight. Do you want to put Kata back out there or drop with Luke? Uh, against the Warriors, which we've seen them do in the past. So that's not out of the question here either, but a great night for Kata in his first NBA start uh, in the Celtics' roll, steamroll over the Hawks here in Atlanta. I'm Bobby Manning. This has been the Garden Report. Check out prize picks. Use code CLNS for a $50 bonus. And go to Game Time. Use the code CLNS over there for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. That's it from Atlanta. I'm heading home. Go vote tomorrow. And we'll see you on Wednesday for Celtics Warriors at TD Garden in Boston.